We have Charles Fedunik from Lake County today to talk to us about weeds. Welcome, Charles. Hi, Bonita. Well, now, for the average homeowner, the, the biggest problem with weeds is identifying them, or what? I, I, weeds are the biggest thing in my yard right, right. now. <laughs> it looks really nice out there. It's green, <laughs> Yeah, right? it's green, at least. <laughs> well, it, when they do come in looking for uh, try to control weeds, there's some things that uh, they need to know before they run out and start buying chemicals to put them down in the yard. Uh, first of all, that we can kind of break weeds into certain t uh, categories, which will help narrow it down for them. Uh, one is we need to know if it's an annual weed, and by identifying it, we'll know if it's a warm or cool season weed. And most of these are controlled with pre-emergence, uh, meaning a chemical that's put down um, where it actually prevents the seed from sprouting, so they don't even, the weed they never see it. Now, an annual means it only it only grows for one year from Correct. flower to seed, and then warm and cool means it's it only occurs you'll only really see it at like the cool season or the warm season. Exactly, a cool season weed will normally germinate in the fall, and we will see those showing up through the winter months. While your warm season weeds will start germinating in the spring, early summer, and that's when you see the weeds showing up on your lawn. And but once you see it, it's too late. You really should have. Um, put something down, before, this pre-emergent down beforehand? For, for pre-emergent, correct. But that's always a little tough to do because, I mean, it's the timing is issue. And with the weather we've had lately in, in this area of Florida, it's been really tough to know exactly when to do that because they don't last forever. I mean, we, we normally get maybe 60 days, uh, 90 days would be uh, an extreme because uh, they simply wear out. And you have to think of it like a blanket you laid on the on the ground, and every time that little seed starts to sprout, it's going to burn it and kill it, keep it from coming up. And that's going to wear off. Rain, weather, traffic, anything that would, would wear that down. Or is, disturbs uh, the soil or because disturbs it's like a soil. chemical layer. And exactly. And they all kind of work differently, but they kind of follow the same pattern of, of, of trying to prevent that seed from popping up. Uh, I've even seen people where they walk from the front door to the back door type around the house. and and put down a pre-emergent, and that's where all the weeds popped up. Just from walking on it, it didn't work very well. Wow. But, but knowing that helps you in, so you're not wasting your time, you're not putting down the thing at the wrong time, and so it's not effective. And it's very discouraging to go out there and, and, and be putting all that down and going to that effort, uh, and then still seeing the weeds pop up, and you don't know what went wrong. So narrowing it down to an annual uh, or a perennial. Now, the perennial weed, we just the opposite. That's a weed that could at least live two years or longer. Now, these will also go to seed, so knowing if it, when you see the weed, kind of gives you a feel for whether or not it's a cool or, uh, or a cool uh, warm season weed, so you know when to put down pre-emergent to control the seed. But we also have to control the weed itself because it may be spreading, uh, either underground or above ground runners, or the, it simply comes back from the root each year and gets bigger. And so you have to go after it, but a little bit more of an arsenal, you might say. And, and then we get into the, the problem with perennial weeds is we want to kill the weed without killing your lawn at the same time. <laughs> That's a difficult one, <laughs> yes. Right. And so we, we break them into categories. Uh, we've got what we call broadleaf weeds. Uh, those are your weeds. We've got several uh, samples here, uh, such as this, and we'll be seeing these types of weeds. It has more of a traditional type leaf on there. Uh, that looks just like a, a regular plant Oval or something you may leaf. plant, right? And net veins, right? Right. They can be a little varied in there, uh, but they'll all be basically kind of have what you would almost call uh, a regular leaf. Uh, here's another example of something here that on this one is Carolina wild geranium, uh, and it has the same thing. You can see this here with the leaf, but see, it's, it has a almost like you think of that dandelion leaf that a lot of people may be used to seeing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you get into what they call sedges. Now, sedges, a lot of times people get these confused with grasses. That looks a lot like a grass. Yeah, it's a nut sedge. And if you feel the stem here on this seed pods coming up, it's triangular. Uh -huh. And so sedges have edges. <laughs> so when you fill them, they're actually triangular in shape. And so these will be uh, a little different because they'll go after this thinking it's a grass. And it is a lot of times called a nut grass because underground it forms a tuber. And that allows it to actually spread and put off runners. It will go underground, it will go on top of the ground, and obviously it will make a seed that can be blown. So you're going to have to go after the seed, you're going to have to go after the weed itself. Uh, now with that we go after it with a post-emergent, meaning that we kill it once it's already up. 
It means it's up and growing. And there are herbicides that are specific for sedges. sedges. They won't kill the grass. They'll actually just, or, or the broadleaf weeds, they'll just kill sedges. Right. That's why it's important. We need to know if we're going after a broadleaf weed or going after a sedge. And I have a, it's not the best example, but this is actually more of a grassy type weed. This is actually a, still a leftover of uh, Bermuda grass. A lot of people say, oh, Bermuda grass is not a weed. It wouldn't be if you had a golf course, you know, and it was maintain it. But if this is a St. Augustine lawn, then this is a weed. And grasses are a lot tougher on a lot of them because they they can actually spread underground, on top of the ground. They have a very elaborate yeah, root if system. If you hold that up, that shows the the kind of uh, yeah. Can I think of like rhizomes. an underground stem that's yeah. growing under the ground, and it can pop up. And Bermuda grass could pop up six feet away from where you see the original plant from. So it's very difficult to control these. Now the problem we have with grasses, and we get into controls, is that we cannot really kill a grass that's up out of St. Augustine or Bahia without damaging the St. Augustine Bahia. Because they're all grasses, you can't kill it, something. Right. The herbicide doesn't yeah. know the difference. And so when you try to go after that, so it's really important that we catch these early. And it may entail actually killing out a spot of the lawn to get rid of it, but we have to make sure we've killed it. A lot of times people will spray an area for a grassy weed and then they'll clear it all out, looks dead, and they'll put the new sod down and the weed comes back. So you want to give it time to make sure those underground roots in this case that could sprout and come back are gone or dead and you're not going to be able to pull it up because with this particular one of Bermuda grass, when you pull it, you break it in pieces, you're actually propagating it. Oh my. And making now, more of it. if you spray that with herbicide, do you have to wait like two weeks and spray it again or Exactly. What? You want to you kill it, get rid of it, rake it out, uh, even water the area and try to get these, uh, especially grassy weeds like Bermuda grass, to re-sprout and come back because most of your herbicides, in this case, won't, won't damage it unless it's green. And so you have to get it growing again so you can try to kill it. Do you give information about what herbicides to use and when to use them at the plant clinic? Yeah, that's probably one of the biggest one we do on lawns is try to help people out uh, by trying to identify the weed form so they can get the best herbicide that's going to cause the least damage to their lawn or to the environment, but also control the weed. Uh, one thing we want to point out, though, is this one did look a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very large weed here. This is a, a spiny thorn thistle. And these are very nasty, but people a lot of times wait till the weeds are this big. And I always kid them and say, you know, when you spray this, now you're going to have a big brown weed instead of a big green weed, and you're still going to pull it out. And it's it's already gone to flower. It it's may already have gone to seed. Exactly. So you may be already killing it, and it's already maybe it's an annual weed, and it's already went to seed. So you may want to think twice about spraying the weed itself because it's going to die and you, you really have to go after the seeds. But try to catch them when they're early, when they're little. Uh, you know, scout your lawns, go out through the grass area and look around, see what weeds you're having a problem with, get them identified, and then try to target the weed that's giving you the most problems if you're gonna look at a herbicide. Well, one this big that's already gone to flower, it's probably much better to pull that and get exactly. it out of your yard than to, yeah, go to ahead and try pull to use that out. herbicide. Now we have to remember that the, the herbicides and the reason we have these weeds, there's a, there has to be a problem with the lawn. Why do we have the weeds there to start with? And so when we come into us, we'll always talk about your mowing, your fertilizing, your watering practices, because the trick is to keep a nice thick turf so the weed seeds can't land, or they can land, but they can't get down through it to the ground. If they get down through because the grass is thin from stress, from uh, over underwatering, fertilizing incorrectly, mowing incorrectly, then that seed's going to pop up, and now you're back to having to depend on the herbicide. So it's always better to keep your lawn nice and healthy. Okay, well that's all we have time for, but the, the, the thing is, keep a healthy lawn and you won't have problems with the weeds. At least not as much. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. Thank you.